Hello everyone, today we are going to see a problem based on influence line diagrams. Let us read the question one time. A train of 4 wheel loads crosses a simply supported girder of 10 meter span from left to right. Using influence lines, calculate the maximum positive and negative shear forces and maximum bending moment at 4 meter from the left support. Also, calculate the absolute maximum bending moment anywhere in the beam. You can see that in the question, four wheel loads are given. These loads are moving from the left to right. We have to make influence lines. Then, we have to calculate the maximum positive and negative shear force and maximum bending moment at 4 meter from the left support. Also, we have to calculate the absolute maximum bending moment in this question. First, let us calculate the maximum positive and negative shear forces. Let us make a point that is point C at 4 meter from the left side. We know the formula for the ordinate for maximum positive shear force L minus X by L. The total length of the beam is 10 meter. X is equal to 4 meter. Finally, we are getting 0 0.6. Ordinate for maximum negative shear force is equal to X by L x is equal to 4, l is equal to 10, here we are getting 0 0.4. Now let us calculate the maximum positive shear force. We are having 4 loads. We have to keep these 4 loads over the positive shear force diagram. Right now W4 is in the point C. In some cases when we move one or two loads on the left side, the positive shear force may increase. First, let us move W4 on the left of C and check whether we are having any decrease or increase in the positive shear force. Right now, W4 is in the point C. But when we move W4 on the left side, W3 will come in the point C. You can see that I have moved W4 on the left side. Now, W3 comes in the point C. Now let us apply the shear increment formula WD by L minus W4. Here W4 comes because W4 is the load which we moved on the left of C. W is the total load. When adding the total load, we have to be very careful. We should not add all of the loads. Before moving W4, we had only 3 loads in the beam. The 10 kN load is on the right of B. It is not inside the beam, so we should not take it. So for the W value, we have to add these three loads. After adding these three loads, we are getting 130. D is the distance in which we have moved the load. We have moved the load at a 2 meter distance. So we have to apply to at least the total length. The total length of the beam is 10 meter. W4 is equal to 40. Finally, we are getting minus 14. We are getting a negative value. That means when we keep this load on the left of C, the maximum positive shear force decreases. So we should not keep this load on the left of C. We must keep this load in the point C. That means just to right of C. Because on just to right of C only, we are having the coordinate for the positive shear force. You can see that I have kept W4 just to right of C. Now let us calculate the ordinates. For 6 meter it is 0 0.6 but I want for 4 meter. I am getting 0 0.4. For 6 meter it is 0 0.6 but I want for 1 meter. I am getting 0 0.1. Now we can calculate the maximum positive shear force. The formula is summation of load into ordinate. 40 into 0 0.6 plus 40 into 0 0.4 plus 50 into 0 0.1 we are getting 45 kN. Now let us calculate the maximum negative shear force. To get the negative shear force we have to keep the loads above this diagram but when we move one or two loads on the right side the negative shear force may increase. First let us move this load on the right side and check whether the negative shear force increase or decrease. When we move this load on the right side, the 50 kN load comes in the point C. 
you can see that I have moved the 10 kN point load on the right of C. Now in the point C, we are having 50 kN point load. Now let us calculate the shear increase. W is the total load. Before moving this point load on the right of C, we had two loads in the beam, 50 kN and 10 kN. We should not consider these two loads because they are not acting in the beam. Only two loads are acting in the beam, they are 50 and 10. When we add 50 and 10, we will get a 60. D is the distance in which we have moved the load. We have moved the load at 2 meter, so we have to apply 2. The length of the beam is 10 meter. Here I have entered W1 because W1 is the load which we have moved on the right. So W1 is equal to 10. Finally, we are getting 2. We are getting positive value. That means when we move 10 kN on the right of C, the negative shear force increases. Now let us move the 50 kN point load on the right of C and check whether we are having increase or decrease in the shear force. You can see that I have moved the 50 kN point load on the right of C. Now in the point C, we are having 40 kN point load. Now let us calculate the shear increase. W is the total load. Before moving the 50 kN point load on the right of C, we had 3 loads in the beam, 40 kN, 50 kN and 10 kN. We should not consider this load because it is not acting on the beam. 40 plus 50 plus 10, we will get 100. D is the distance at which we have moved the load. We have moved 50 kN load at the distance of 3 meter. So we have to apply 3. Length of the beam is 10 meter. We have moved 50 kN which is W2. That is why I have entered W2. W2 is equal to 50. Finally, we are getting minus 20. We are getting negative value. That means when we move 50 kN on the right of C, the negative shear force decreases. So we should not keep 50 kN on the right of C, but we should keep it in the point C. You can see that I have kept 50 kN point load in the point C or just left of C because on the left side only we are having negative shear force ordinate. Now let us calculate the other ordinates. For 4 meter it is 0.6, but I want for 1 meter we are getting 0.1. For 6 meter it is 0.6 but I want for 4 meter I am getting 0.4. Now let us calculate the maximum negative shear force. This ordinate we have to keep as a negative because it is inside the positive diagram. 40 into 0.1 plus 50 into 0.4 minus 10 into 0.4 we are getting 20 kN. Now let us calculate the maximum bending moment. We know the formula for the ordinate for maximum bending moment x into L minus x by L. Here x is equal to 4 meter, L minus x is equal to 6 meter. Finally we are getting 2.4. We are having 4 loads. We may have some confusion. Which load we have to keep in the point C? For that we have to find the critical load. Let us assume W3, 40 kN is the critical load. First, let us keep the 40 kN on the left of C. Later, we can keep in the right of C. Then, we have to find the differential loading rate. If there is any change in sign of the differential loading rate, this load is critical. If there is no change in sign, we have to take other loads and check whether they are critical. Now we have assumed 40 kN point load is the critical one. First we have kept in the left of C. Let us calculate the differential loading rate. The formula is W left by X minus W right by L minus X. For W left we have to add the loads which is in the left of C. On the left of C we are having two loads 40 plus 40 we will get 80. On the right of C we are having two loads. 50 and 10. When we add both of them, we are getting 60. Finally, we are getting LR is equal to 10. We are getting a positive value. Now, let us keep this load on the right of C. 
I have kept 40 kN point load on the right of C. Again, we are going to calculate LR. On the left of C, we are having only one load that is 40. On the right of C, we are having three loads 40 plus 50 plus 10, we will get 100. X is equal to 4 meter, L minus X is equal to 6 meter. Here we are having negative value, that means our assumption is correct. 40 kN is the critical load because the differential loading rate changes from positive to negative. So this is the load we have to keep in the point C. You can see that I have kept the critical load in the point C. Now let us calculate the ordinates. For 4 meter it is 2.4 but I want for 2 meter. I am getting 1.2. For 6 meter it is 2.4 but I want for 3 meter. I am getting 1.2. For 6 meter it is 2.4 but I want for 1 meter I am getting 0.4 Now let us calculate the maximum bending moment We have to multiply these loads with the ordinates then we have to add them Finally we are getting 208 kN meter Now let us calculate the absolute maximum bending moment For these 4 loads there will be a resultant we have to calculate the location of the resultant. For that, let us take a moment about the point under this load. Let us keep clockwise positive and anticlockwise negative. These three loads are acting in the clockwise direction towards the point. So these three loads will be positive. For 10 kN, the distance is 7 meter. For 50 kN, the distance is 5 meter. For 40 kN, the distance is 2 meter. The resultant is acting in the anticlockwise direction towards the point, so it will be negative and the distance is x bar, so minus r into x bar. In this way we can calculate x bar which is equal to 2.86 meter. The maximum absolute bending moment occurs under the load which is nearer to the resultant. W3 40 kN is nearer to the resultant. Let us calculate the distance between W3 and the resultant R. 2.86 minus 2, we will get 0.86 meter. So this distance is 0.86, but we want the center point. Let us calculate the center. 0.86 by 2, we are getting the center. So this is the point we have to keep in the center of the beam. So W3 40 kN should be kept at 0.43 meter at left of center of the beam. You can see that I have kept 40 kN at 0.43 meter left of C. We know the formula for the ordinate of maximum bending moment x into L minus x by L. This ordinate should be kept in the 40 kN point load. On the left of 40 kN point load, we are having 4.57 meter and on the right side we are having 5.43 meter so x is equal to 4.57 and l minus x is equal to 5.43 the total length is 10 finally we are getting 2.48 now let us calculate the other ordinates for 4.57 it is 2.48 but i want for 2.57 meter we are getting 1.39 for 5.43 meter it is 2.48 but I want for 2.43 meter I am getting 1.11 for 5.43 meter it is 2.48 but I want for 0.43 meter I am getting 0.19 now we can calculate the absolute maximum bending moment we have to multiply the loads with the ordinates then we have to add them Finally, we are getting 212.2 kN meter. Now, we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.